Hi everyone, I'm Tatiana and welcome to Russian Culture Weekly. Today's topic is a little bit different, but I really feel that I should explain it to you. It is a very important one and it will pop up every now and again, almost in every music, literature, whatever video. And I also know that many people who are, let's say, uh, outside from the ex-USSR really struggle with this. This topic is Russian names. Now, as some of you might know, a Russian name consists of three parts. Two of them are pretty international and common. I mean, your given name and your surname or your family name. However, in a Russian name, there is something in between your given name and your family name. And this is not your middle name. This is your patronymic. Now, what is a patronymic? A patronymic is a special form of your father's name added to a given name and your family name to make your full Russian name. When you are filling almost any form in Russian, you will see three letters, F, E, O, in Russian. Uh, so F stands for familia, which is a Russian word for family name. Then E means ime, your name, your given name, I mean. And finally, O is for отчество, which is patronymic. Now, in Russian, unlike some other cultures and languages, there are basically two ways of putting your full name. You can either put the family name first, then the given name and patronymic, or the other way around, the given name and patronymic, and then the family name. But please mention that the patronymic always goes with the given name. You cannot split them up in the full name. And the way when you put your family name first and then your name and patronymic, I would say it's slightly more official. You might find this way, for example, in your working contract. The second way when you put your given name and your patronymic and then your family name uh, tends to be more respectful. For example, if you are reading about a famous person, a classical writer, let's say, um, you will most probably see their name written like that. Let's imagine, for example, that you are reading a textbook on Russian literature and there is an article about Pushkin. I'd say you are highly unlikely to see Pushkin's full name written as Pushkin Alexander Sergeyevich because this seems to be way too official and it reminds me somehow of police protocols. Something like Pushkin Alexander Sergeyevich being drunk broke a window on the Nevsky Prospect. No, you are way more likely to see his full name written as Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. His given name, then his patronymic and then his family name. Going back to patronymics, how do you form one? So basically, you take your father's name and add special endings, uh, which differ for male and female forms. For example, let's take an imaginary man named Ivan. And if Ivan has a son, then Ivan's son patronymic will be Ivanovich. So we add Ovich to Ivan and we have the patronymic. However, if our imaginary Ivan has a daughter, her patronymic will differ from the male one and it will be Ivanovna. So it's not Ovich, but Ovna in the end. Or for example, let's take my full name. My father's name is Alexander. So we take his name and add Ovna, which is the female ending. So my name would be Tatiana Alexandrovna. However, there are patronymics that are formed a little bit differently. For example, for male names Ilya and Nikita, 
which are way older Russian names, but still used a lot. So for those two, the male patronymic ending will be each, and for a female, the ending will be ichna. So, for example, a son of Ilya will be Ilyich, and of Nikita, Nikitich. And a daughter of Ilya will have a patronymic of Ilyinishna, and of Nikita, Nikitishna. Usually it's pronounced with sh instead of ch, not Nikitichna, but Nikitishna. The full names, by which I mean the given name, patronymic, and full name, are not used all the time. And many people are referred to just by their given name and their family name. For example, this is true for many contemporary singers, writers, and other famous people. However, if we are talking about, for example, a classical writer, we tend to use their full name, including their patronymic. For example, if we are talking about some contemporary writers, such as Evgeny Vodolaskin or Dina Rubina, they are both great, but they are not classical yet. So we tend to say just Evgeny Vodolaskin, his given name and his family name, or Dina Rubina. Dina is her given name and Rubina is her family name. But if we are talking about, for example, Tolstoy or Dostoevsky or other great classical writers, we tend to use their full name, including their patronymic, like that. Lev Nikolaevich Tolstoy or Fyodor Mikhailovich Dostoevsky. Now, in everyday life, addressing a person by their given name and patronymic is probably the most polite way of addressing people in Russian. So you call your school teachers like that, your university professors like that, almost always. There are younger professors, especially at universities, especially at bigger cities, who prefer being called just by their given name, but this is rare. So yes, in the academic circumstances, uh, you tend to call people by their given name and their patronymic. You also almost always call a doctor by his or her given name and patronymic. Also, you often address people who are way older than you or, in other ways, your superiors by their given name and their patronymic. For example, bosses in many companies are called by their given names and patronymics. Another common situation when you use the given name and the patronymic to address a person is when you are addressing your parents-in-law. Um, this differs from family to family, of course, but for example, in my family, I address my parents-in-law by their given names and patronymics, and my husband does the same with my parents. When a Russian person introduces him or herself, they tend to say only their given name, not their family name. It can happen, however, for example, in academic situations, when a professor introduces him or herself to the students. Then they might say their full name, like the given name, patronymic, and their family name. Now let's talk a little bit about Russian family names. Many, but not all, Russian family names tend to have of, yev, or in, in, in the end. For example, one research shows that the most common Russian family names are Ivanov, Smirnov, Popov and Kuznetsov. Please note that those forms I've mentioned are male, so to form a female form, you must add a in the end. So Ivanov is a man, but Ivanova is a woman. There are some family names, however, which do not have this. For example, the family names ending with ich or ich, like Sidych or Hramych, those have the same form both for males and for females. And finally, let's talk about Russian given names. What are some common Russian given names? One research shows that in 2021, the most common baby boy names were Alexander, Maxim, Mikhail, 
Mark and Artem. For baby girls, the most common names were Sofia or Sofia, which is basically the same name but differing in one letter, then Anna, Maria and Alisa. This situation or let's say this fashion for names changes from decade to decade, of course. Uh, for example, Alexander is a very universal name and it was common way before even I was born. And in my class at school, we had four boys named Alexander. However, popular girl names were different. For example, again, in my class, we had three girls named Yulia. And I don't see that many Yulias anymore. There are also some names that can be used both for girls and boys, usually with a slight difference in spelling. For example, Alexander is a boy's name, but if we add an A in the end, Alexandra, this is a name for a girl. Same goes for Valentin and Valentina, Valeri and Valeria. Here we change Y into Ya. Then Evgeny, Evgenia, the same here. And now, last but not least, Russian short names. This is one topic I know a lot of people struggle with because usually there's really no logic in forming the short names from the full name. To make matters worse, many Russian names have multiple short forms. For example, take my name. Tatiana is the full given name. Tanya is kind of neutral short form. Then we have Tanka, which is way less respectful than Tanya or Tatiana, of course. Then we have Tanyusha, Tanichka or Tanyushka. Those are really fond and affectionate. And then we have Tanyucha, which is a little bit harder to explain. It has some kind of, hey, Tanyu, how will you go drink beer with us? This kind of attitude. Now, you can encounter Russian short names in almost any piece of contemporary or classical Russian literature. For example, take the Karamazov brothers by Dostoevsky. Alexei Karamazov, Alexei is his full name, but he is called Alyosha, which is a short form. So to help you a little bit, let me give you some examples of common Russian names and their short forms. Let's start with the names for girls. Ekaterina has Katya, which a little bit reminds of English Catherine and Kate. Then Anastasia can be Asia or Nastya. I would say that Nastya is a little bit more common now, but maybe you know Turgenev's Asia, which is a novel. So now you know that the main female character of Turgenev was called Anastasia, actually. Sofia and Sofia both have Sonia as a short form. Maria has Masha. Daria has Dasha. Then Anna has Anya as the most common form. There is, however, a little bit outdated form of Nura. And don't even try to ask me why Nura is short for Anna, because I don't know. There is no logic, as I said, in the way the short forms are formed from, from the name. And short forms can be tricky a little bit. For example, if we take the name Alona. Alona might be a short form of Yelena. But Alona can also be a separate name. For example, take the figure skater Alona Kostarnaya. She is not Yelena, she is Alona. But some Yelenas prefer to be called Alonas. So you should probably ask the person what is their full name. And now let's have a look at some male names. Mikhail has a short form of Misha. And yes, I know that in some English-speaking cultures, Misha is a girl's name, but in Russian, Misha is the short form for male name Mikhail. Sergei has Sereja. Anatoly has Tolia, while Nikolai has Kolia. So you see here that those short forms, Tolia and Kolia, they differ only one letter, but the full names they come from differ a lot 
I mean, Anatoly and Nikolai, they are totally different. Ivan has Vanya. Again, here, Vanya is for Ivan, for a male name, and Tanya is for Tatiana, a female name. There is also Danya for Daniil or Danila, which is a male name. And Vladimir, which is actually pronounced as Vladimir in Russian, has two common short forms, which are Vova and Volodya. And Alexei has two short forms too, Lyosha and Alyosha. And for the names that can be used both for girls and boys, the short forms may be the same or can differ. For example, Alexander and Alexandra, both male and female form, have Sasha as a short form. There is also Shura, which can be used for both, but tends to be used more with boys. And there is also Sanya, which is a little bit less respectful and tends to be used more with boys. Then Valentin and Valentina. This name has Valia as a short form both for a girl and a boy, but this is not always the case. For example, if we take Valeri and Valeria, Valeri is a male form and Valeria is a female form. So Valeri, the male form, has Valera, but Valeria the female form has Lera. And I don't think you will ever encounter a man called Lera shortly. So please don't. And the same goes for Victor and Victoria, which is kind of pair name too. Victor has Vita as a short name, while Victoria, the female form, has Vika. And I'm absolutely sure you will never see a man called Vika. <laughs> Great! So I do hope that now you understand more about Russian names than you did before. And if you do, then my objective is complete. Take care and see you next week.